Now, what we're doing here is we're using the uh, emery foam. Uh, this particular emery foam is a fiberglass wire mesh that uh, we're using to uh, clean the copper fitting. And you can also use a wire brush to clean the copper fittings. This is a 3 quarter inch copper 90. And we just want to make sure that the uh, inside of the copper fitting is clean. And what you see me doing here is cleaning the uh, edges of the uh, copper fitting. That helps to uh, also make a better weld solder joint. And here we're applying the uh, flux which will allow the copper pipe and the copper fitting to uh, solder together. What you're looking at here on the floor there is a uh, backflow valve and what we're showing you there was a uh, three-quarter inch male adapter so before we uh, put this male adapter and attach it to the uh, backflow adapter we're going to solder the pipe to the uh, male adapter first that way when we go to uh, pipe dope the uh, male adapter or put Teflon tape on it we uh, won't lose our seal reheating it up and we won't damage the uh, backflow preventer with uh, any heat. And you see here we're cutting the pipe, three quarter inch pipe, with the pipe cutters. And every time I make a turn or two, you see right there, I just made a little twist to tighten it down a little more. Twist it a little more. And to eventually pop, it comes loose. Do this again. Just cut a couple turns. Turn the handle, tighten down on it. A couple more turns. Take our uh, emery cloth and clean off the end of the copper pipe. Now we'll put our flux on here. It's important that when you do put the flux, uh, there's no such thing as too much flux. You just want to make sure that you put enough. Okay, now we'll take our copper mail adapter, put the two pieces together, and any excess flux that's lingering around, we'll just kind of wipe it off with our glove or a rag. And I always do this just so that when I do go to solder, it makes a nice clean joint and you don't have solder running everywhere there's uh, flux. Okay, now we're going to get our solder together. And the particular solder that you want is you want lead-free solder or 95.5. And you noticed I had a hook on the end of the uh, solder. 
that's so that I can reach around the other side of the uh, pipe when I need to. Notice the fire lane that I'm put on, putting on here. The uh, hottest point is right there at the blue tip of it. And you will notice that the solder, just like water, will follow the heat. So we just put the fire where we want the solder to go. And it'll suck the solder right up in there. We don't want the fire on the pipe, we don't want the fitting. So it will suck the solder right up in there. Now you can see the uh, solder starting to be drawn up into the fitting. So a little run it down the side. We're just going to kind of wipe that with our glove or our rag if you have one. It's important that we uh, try not to let it get down onto the uh, threads. And what we're doing here is just kind of capping it off a little, giving it a little extra solder just to make sure we have that tight seal. Okay, here we have a uh, three-quarter inch coupling, and you notice there is a brass piece attached to it. So what we're going to do this time, we're going to aim the fire the opposite way of the brass piece so that we don't heat the brass piece up any hotter than we need to. And this is a uh, vertical solder. And once we get the cut solder to start to take, we'll start wiping the solder up into the joint rather than wiping it away. Okay, now it's sucking the solder up in there. And once we get a good flow, and notice when we get the solder too tight, we gradually pull the flat fire away from the fitting, so we don't even overheat it, and the solder runs everywhere. Okay, now we've got the solder going up there pretty good. And you see, we wipe it up in there with the glove or the rag if you have one. And again, we're just capping it off for a little extra precaution. Cutting is already heated from what we've done below, so it doesn't take long to uh, get the solder to flow this time. Okay, now this is an overhead solder. Yeah, three quarter inch coupling and three quarter inch pipe. And if you could kind of see the reflection of the uh, solder in the pipe you see that I have a hook on the end of it and like I said I always pull it out and put a hook on the end so that we can reach over to the side that we can't see now you right there you see the solder being sucked around drawn to the heat there we hit the other side and wipe and we'll just cap it off a little bit again because when we wipe we kind of move the pipe a little bit and this is going to be extra precaution here too to make sure we have a nice seal and here again we have a uh, Another vertical 
side of joint, vertical to horizontal. And we heat it up and wait for the solder to be drawn in there. And there it goes. Now it's drawn, so we pull back on the fire. Wipe the excess solder so we have a nice clean joint. And you notice we wiped it up into the joint and not away from it. Here we go with the horizontal joint. to horizontal. I'm sorry, horizontal to vertical. Remember the uh, blue tip of the flame on the fitting itself, the hottest part of the fire. And once we heat this fitting up, the pipe up underneath will be heated also. Taken. You notice the nice, clean, straight bead that I have around there? That comes from right wiping the excess flux off the pipe. You don't want the flux all over the pipe and all over the fitting because uh, that solder will follow the flux and, and make it a nice, messy solder joint if you have flux everywhere. I always put a lot of flux on, but I always wipe the excess off of the uh, fitting and pipe itself so that I get a nice, neat bead around the pipe. And as it gets hot, pull the flame away. Uh, when we work with the other side, that'll give us uh, a chance to play with the pipe and move it around to where we want to. Now let's get back to the other side.
I will let that cool down and then we'll take our we'll add another piece and take our copper hook and pull it up in place. Now we extended the hot over and we're going to uh, offset it right here. But first we're going to get a uh, copper hook so we can secure it to the floor boys. Okay, we've secured it right here, but now that we've secured it at the other end, this end is kind of got a drop in it. So now we want to get another copper hook to pull that end back up. Now it's nice and level. Okay, now we've made the offset piece up. We're going to, uh, this is, it, it is in a spot where it's kind of hard to brace, so we're going to go back to using our child lock pliers to egg shape it again. So stay in place. Wipe that access off of the access flux. Now we're gonna pinch it again. And we're gonna pinch that so that don't happen again. Pinch, kind of turn a little bit so it'll lock in place. And we'll pinch that one. And we'll just kind of roll it right up to the spot where we need it. Right there. Okay, now we've made our offset. We're going to sweat the pipe together. And like we've done before, to keep the uh, wood from getting burned, I'm going to slip something in here. Okay, to keep the flames off. Piece of metal in place so that we don't uh, burn any of the wood up here. Always trying to aim the fire in the opposite direction of anything that you might be able to burn or catch a fire, such as the wood here. Now 
Now let that sit for a minute and then we'll solder our other one so we can use that piece of metal to bring it over to this side here. Now we're ready to solder our other 90 in place. Gotta push that up in there, sir. Now, this may push it down, but we still have room to push it up because down at this end, we haven't soldered those pipes together yet. And that's the reason I left that unsoldered to give me the uh, opportunity to make adjustments. Now let's solder this piece up over here. You know, the solder is easily sucked in there. It's just following the heat. Where you put the heat, that's where the solder will go. Let's let that cool down and then we'll start back in the middle part. Right here we're going to bring our um, half inch water lines to the tub. One will be for the cold, one will be for the hot, and then you see the uh, two right there. Those will be for the uh, tub and shower in the basement when we put the bathroom in. But now we have the uh, pipes in place. And the thing about working between the floor joists is that you really don't have anywhere to hang any pipes. So in this case what we do is we just cut a piece of copper pipe. Get a measurement from joist to joist. like so and that would be 14 and a quarter so what we would do is cut that 14 and probably about 5 eighths just a little bit more so that we can wedge it right up in there okay. this is the piece that we're going to use to wedge into the floor joist so what we want to do is smash the end of each end down flat. Flip it over. And we're going to do the other side. nice and sharp enough to where we can wedge it up into the uh, floor joist. Now we're going to put our pipe up in here. You notice that this doesn't quite fit. It's just exactly what we want so that we can wedge it and jam it in place so that it won't go anywhere. And at the same time, hold our pipes up for us.
Now the next trick we're going to do We're going to solder those pieces in place. So we just put a little flux in this spot here, a little spot here. And we're just going to heat it up and just dab a little solder on it. I mean, a little flux on there. And it'll keep us in place and it won't move on it. notice I don't have anything protecting the wood but I do have the flame going in the other direction so that we don't burn the wood Now, you see how tight it is in place now. You can hear it's not going anywhere. Okay, now I have the braces down here for the, uh, the other pipes coming across. Now we're going to solder that in place. Okay, now we're going to hit the busy spot back here. Notice that I pulled the solder out and put a, always put a hook on the end of it so that I can reach over and around things with it. Again, I'm aiming the fire away from the wood.
notice I use a little extra flux uh, when I get the fittings that I'm not sure about at times. I just put a little more flux on it just to make sure that it it's adhesive. Now, we're back here where we started at the water heater because we're coming back to the side of those 90s up there. We didn't side those right away because we wanted to make sure we had play in the pipe while we worked with the other end of it. And this is right up on the floor joist, so we're going to keep trying to keep from burning up some wood. keeping the fire going the opposite way of anything that's going to burn. Alright, what we have here is a three quarter inch dielectric union. And before I solder the uh, dielectric union together to the copper pipe, we're going to pipe dope it up and screw it in place because we're actually going to use the uh, the union to hold our copper pipe in place as we solder it. And then once we uh, solder it, we're going to take it back apart. So first let's get this uh, union on here as tight as we can to the water heater. Okay, now let's come back to the uh, dielectric union. What we're going to do now here is we're going to take a three-quarter inch male adapter, clean it, put it on the end of this three-quarter inch copper pipe, and we're going to solder it. And this piece is going to be used for the uh, pressure relief valve on the side of the hot water heater. So now let's clean our uh, pipe with our fiberglass mash.
And we're going to use a wire brush this time and clean the inside of the uh, three-quarter inch copper fitting and brush off the top of it. And that is a three-quarter inch wire brush. And now we're going to flux the uh, mail adapter and flux the pipe. And again, we're doing this, we're soldering it now before we attach it to the relief valve so that we don't uh, overheat the relief valve and mess up the uh, wash. Okay, we've got the copper pipe and the fitting so that it's off the floor and in a position that we can uh, put our fire on it and solder the pipe. Fitting to the pipe. And again, I will uh, repeat this throughout the video because it's important. Uh, notice the hook that I'm putting on the uh, solder so that I can grab around the back side of it. And I'll probably constantly show you this because I want to make sure that when you start soldering pipes, to make it a little easy for yourself. See how I just got the hook right there? Just reach right around the other side. Keeps you from burning yourself. Okay, now I'll pull the flame off of it. Got a little hot. Okay, now back to the uh, dielectric union. This is the uh, brass part of the dielectric union which the uh, copper pipe will go into and we'll uh, fuse the two together with the uh, solder and just like any other fitting we clean the brass fitting we put the wire brush and clean the tip of it course flux it. Flux the pipe. And this small piece is what you might call a random piece, just a piece that you grab and just about the size that you feel that you might need. Okay, now you see that I'm putting the uh, union together, but I'm not putting the uh, plastic insert in there because I don't want it to melt. But once we solder this to the uh, brass adapter, we will take it back apart and then we'll put the plastic insert back in there. This is the reason uh, I do it this way, so that we don't burn the uh, plastic insert or melt it.
And, and this way you can see how much easier it is to uh, solder a dielectric di unit. Because now you have it braced on something where you can get to it easily. And what I usually do is when I do put the flame to it, I try to keep the flame going up. Because we, 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 we want to try to keep the uh, flame from coming down too far on the uh, nipple where the threads are so we don't uh, melt all the uh, pipe dope out of it. And we'll keep our nice tight seal. Okay. There we go. We just wipe it off of there. And remember, all the flux was wiped off from the outside to keep the uh, solder from going everywhere. And that's what keeps us from having a messy solder joint. And instead, we have a nice, neat solder joint. Okay, the pipe has cooled down. You probably can't see it because of the video. Uh, we skipped the part of it cooling down. You see now we're putting the plastic insert over it. And here's the other dielectric union. We're going to put the uh, plastic insert over that. Of course, we can't forget our washer. And the purpose of the uh, dielectric unit is to isolate the uh, two metals from touching each other. The uh, metal tank of the uh, the metal of the tank of the hot water heater, and the brass, because if the two tend to touch, it would cause one of the metals to corrode out faster than the other and electrolysis will travel through it. And the dielectric union prevents the electrolysis from traveling through the uh, copper and brass pipe. And what we're doing here, this particular home has a, uh, a lot of pipes that was ran in, uh, pipes that was ran in soft copper 3 8 copper which is uh, not standard today so this is a this is a pretty much older home and at a time where they didn't have a lot of codes so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna adapt to this 3 8 uh, soft copper we're gonna go from 3 quarter inch to 3 8 and the water heater itself will be up to code uh, but the uh, older pipes will be grandfathered in, but eventually in some date or time, hopefully they will bring it up to code and increase the size of the uh, water lines. Here's our adapter that we're going to go from one size of pipe, small pipe, to a larger size, which would be the three-quarter going into the hot water heater.
because that's where the uh, washer is and we don't want to take a chance and burn the washer up in there and melt it and I don't know if you can see it now but there's an arrow in here and you have to make sure that when you put this cutoff valve on that the arrow is uh, facing the uh, right way which it should be facing going to into the water heater which is the uh, inlet of the water there you go you can see the arrow right there and we're going to size this small piece up so that we can cut a piece to fit in there And before we solder it, we want to just kind of tighten it down and get it set right to where we want it. Okay, now you see we're starting to heat up the uh, cutoff valve, which is the brass part. And notice the flame is facing the uh, opposite way of the uh, washer. And we're not going to keep the flame on here too much because we don't want to overheat this uh, cutoff so that we don't melt the uh, washers inside. It'll withstand so much heat, but we don't want to go past the amount of heat that it will uh, handle. Into the door, not away from it. 